Hi guys, it's me! Yay! <laughs> I feel like it's been so long since I saw you all last or made a vlog. I don't know. These are... I... Excuse how I talk to you guys. I just... How do you talk in a vlog? You know, like I feel like I see you guys all the time. Like whenever I make a video and you guys are watching it, it's like me seeing you kind of. Um, so when I don't make a video, it feels like I haven't seen you in a long time, which sounds completely ridiculous because obviously like we are not actually seeing me. I mean... I, I don't know. Anyways, but I just feel really close to you all, so I'm a dork. Anyways, it's been a month, you guys. Like, I don't even know, man. I would say that if it, it has flown by. Like, when I look back and think, oh my gosh, it's just flown by. Like, I don't, it's already been a month. Like, it, it shocks me that it has been a month. But at the same time, it's also dragged on. Like, I remember every single horrible moment of it. So, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So, we're exactly a mo month and one day postpartum. Kai is officially a month and one day old. She is a chunker, let me tell you. Uh, she was born, like I said, like you guys know, at 8 pounds, 6 ounces. And she has outgrown all of her newborn clothes already. She is in three-month clothing. <laughs> um, she's not, like, completely filling it out yet, but she fits into it, which is amazing because my other kids were just, like, took forever, it seemed, to get into new cl um, clothes. So now I've, you know, gotten to go shopping to <laughs> buy new clothes for her because I just figured she'd fit in a newborn longer, but whatever. But yeah, she's just, oh my gosh, she's great. Um, I have taken notes throughout this whole month for you guys in terms of, like, her development and both mine um, in terms of healing postpartum. I do want to say in advance, I really, really struggled with whether or not I wanted to share some of this stuff with you guys, especially, like, her development because I feel like parents and women... Um, have a tendency to see where other kids are at or not at, you know, lacking or um, where they're um, excelling in terms of development. And either they freak out because their kid is not there yet or they gloat and feel great about themselves because their kids have surpassed that. And I don't want that to be the case here. I don't want people to think, oh, wow, like my kid's behind because her kid's already doing this. What's wrong with my kid? And I don't want people to think that I'm gloating because my kid has already done these things and their kid hasn't. Um, I think all kids are different. I know that because I have three of them and they've all developed completely differently. So um, please keep that in mind. I am not trying to compare my child to anybody's. You should not compare your child to anybody's. If you have any concerns about your child's development, contact your pediatrician. Just, you know, a lot of kids are late bloomers, so let me just tell you, you know, I just want to put that out there. Um, but so in terms of Kaya's development, uh, her stump fell off at five, I'm going to go through this really quickly because there's a lot. Her stump fell off at five days. Um, we started cloth diapering that day of, but then had to move back to disposables because of a thrush issue that we had going on, but she is back in cloth again. Um, I love cloth. She's had, like I said, a bad diaper rash because of her thrush. We used Vaseline for the first few weeks, and then this past week we started using Desitin because I felt more comfortable putting that on her butt now that she's a little bit older. She poops after and during every feeding. Um, when she first came home and started nursing and my milk supply came in, she was pooping around the clock, which I remember my son was like that. He had loose cheeks, so to speak. Every fart poop came out. Um, breastfed babies, they digest the breast milk a lot faster than formula-fed babies because it is the closest thing to, you know, nature and their human body. Um, so that's why they eat more. That's why they poop more. Um, but she was pooping around the clock. Now it's not as bad. Now she poops after every single feeding, usually during the feeding. So that's always fun to hear pooping while she's nursing. But um, yeah, I can pretty much count on her pooping every single time she eats, uh, which is normal. She's We're co-sleeping. Um, this was a huge huge thing for me uh she we have an arms reach co-sleeper which i bought used on craigslist for 40 dollars. awesome because i only bought it used for well a few reasons one because babies outgrow everything two because we don't have a lot of money to be buying a bunch of new stuff after we thought we were done with having kids and we gave away our other stuff uh, and three because i knew my son hated being in a crib so i wasn't going to put all my eggs in a basket so to speak in terms of her being in a crib so i didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on something that i didn't know she'd even use um, we do use the co-sleeper. She naps in it sometimes. She does well with that. In terms of nighttime, she hates it. The first week she was home, she actually slept in it but woke up every hour. And then the second week, I started bringing her to bed with me and noticed she was sleeping three to four hours, which is what my son was exactly like, and that's why I broke down and started sleeping with him as well. I'm not completely for or completely against co-sleeping. Like I said, I did it with my son. Um, I had no issues with it except for transitioning him. That was a little tough, but again... 
that's tough. I mean, transitioning any kid in any way is tough. Um, but what I struggled with with my daughter was I was hoping that she would sleep in the co-sleeper. That's not the issue. I was kind of feeling guilty because I like my space in my bed, sort of, but I also like my sleep. And then I was also like, I don't want to, you know, I don't know. It was hard. But after going to my OB appointment last week and talking to my doctor, he said something really... He said something really insightful to me that I took to heart and it's kind of, kind of completely changed my mind on what I was, you know, what our sleeping um, situation is going to be from now on, which is he said, you know, the one thing that he wishes he could go back and rewind and redo during his kids infancies would be to sleep with them more because it only lasts for so long. And it's completely true. My two and a half year old does not like cuddling with me. He will not sleep with me anymore when I want him to. And right now, I have this little gem in my arms that wants to be around me all the time and I just, you know, I'm just going to take advantage of it right now. So I'm not going to press her to sleep in a co-sleeper, or in her arms reach co-sleeper right now. Uh, I'm going to allow her to sleep with me as much as she wants. We do 60 minutes of skin to skin time to help my supply and to kind of help her. Um, I think it's really important. Um, you can look it up. There's a lot of added benefits to extending skin to skin time past the hospital. Um, so we do that anyways, and she's just been sleeping better, and I've been sleeping longer, so right now I don't mind it. I'm not going to push anything. That took a long time to talk about. She took a, started taking a bottle from my husband on day four. I started pumping because we really wanted her to do bottle and breast. Um, breast milk, of course, not formula. Uh, my son, we waited a month before I introduced a bottle with him, and he hated bottles and any type of artificial nipple. Um, past fires, he took nothing except for my breast, and it was really draining on me. I did not spend more than two hours away from my son for the first almost nine months of his life. So... We really didn't want that happening again uh, in case I start going back to work or in case, and just any reason, you know. So she started taking a bottle from him at four days. She'll take a bottle for me too when we're in the car. I'll hand pump and stuff and give it to her. It's just been awesome. And she transitions back to breast really well. Uh, her jaundice, she was slightly jaundiced that went away um, after lots and lots of feeding. And I took her out during the day and stuff like that. And she's doing really well. She started sleeping three to four hour intervals around two weeks. Again, we started co-sleeping then too. So I don't know what, you know, which, why. You know, it could have been because she's older. Or it could have been because we started co-sleeping. She stopped getting, she used to get really upset before she would poop. Like really upset, like just like uncontrollably crying. Um, now she doesn't do that. She gets a little bit cranky, but not as upset as she used to be. And it was because I was taking Vicodin. My, I had major, major back pain, major, major back pain, um, because I had a lot of back labor. Um, she was very posterior when she was born. Um, my sciatic was already messed up, so I was on a regimen of Vicodin every four hours. I didn't take the amount that they told me to. I was supposed to take two every some hours, but I only took one every six hours. Um, that constipated me uh, a lot. And I noticed that she was getting upset before her poop, so I just experimented and stopped taking the Vicodin. And sure enough, she stopped getting as upset before her poop. So I just started biting the bullet and just taking the pain because I didn't want her to get upset before her poops anymore. So I stopped taking the Vicodin and just now deal with my pain. I'm actually going back to physical therapy soon, but more on that later. At two weeks, she developed thrush. We're actually still battling thrush. I have it in my breast. She has it um, in her mouth. Uh, she is on Nystat and I'm on Diflucan and it is something that can take up to six weeks to go away So we're just sticking with the medicine. She started cooing at 17 days and it was adorable I thought it was a mistake, but then she cooed again like 10 minutes later and it's just like angels singing <laughs> Like I know that sounds so stupid, but it's just so adorable. It's just like coo. Like I don't I don't I don't I sounded like a freak doing that or like a weird pigeon, but she it's really cute um her sneezes are really adorable. She's looking at me like I'm crazy. Her sneezes are so adorable too. Like I told John, <laughs> she which sneezed and I was like, oh my god, they're like angel farts. And he was like, why would you say they're like farts? Why wouldn't you say they're like angels sneezes? Like, I don't know. They're just, they're just so cute. I know, mom is crazy. They're cute. Anyways, so she started cooling around 70 days. Um, she was a really sleepy baby, which I was concerned about her jaundice because of that. She would fall asleep on the boob. She just slept all day long and all, you know, and not night, all night long, but she would, you know, wake up to eat and then go back to sleep. But she just slept all the time. That's how newborns are. I wasn't concerned completely. I, as long as she was eating and having wet diapers and her jaundice was going away, I didn't care. Um, but she started becoming alert at around 17 days old and now is, like, awake from, like, I don't know. She's awake, like, all day long now. It's crazy. She'll nap every once in a while in your arms, but she likes to be awake and look around. Hi. Yeah. 
she's still working on her eye muscle control. Uh, like I said in my blog post about, you know, 17 things I wish I would have known before having a baby, uh, the crazy eyes are still there. Um, if you haven't had a baby already, your baby's going to have these crazy eyes where they go all over their head, they look two different directions at once, and it's because their eye muscles are not developed yet. Um, it takes some time for those to, you know, completely get strong it's because it's a muscle back there that controls where your eyes go so she's still working on that she does do direct eye contact now but she does does still have her moments where you're like oh where are you looking you know uh but yeah but that was at two weeks she started getting more control over those um and she has more control of her movements now um as you can see she's still kind of flailing a little bit but three and a half weeks is when she started actually just settling down and not doing as much of the whole like spasm like seizure type thing so and that's it for her in terms of her development. She's just doing really great. I'm really happy with her. She only cries when she needs to eat. And she doesn't even cry. She does this like, ah, ah. I sound like a deranged like baby doll. But she, she makes these like little like upset noises. It's not even crying. Um, unless you don't meet her needs within like 10 minutes then she really gets upset. But I mean, she she's really just a great baby. I mean, I think what they say about third babies being the easiest is totally true because... It's just been great. She's been the easiest out of all of them. Um, now moving on to me. Um, I'm a little bit of a nutcase. I had got mastitis within the first week. I had an enlarged lymph node underneath my armpit, which I immediately thought was cancer and a big tumor. Um, like I freaked out. I immediately told John I was dying. Turns out it was mastitis and it was just a swollen lymph node in my right breast. I won't say only because it's really painful. I had mastitis twice with my son, so I was very familiar with it and it was just really painful so I pumped I continued to breastfeed uh, she really didn't want to take from my breast because it was infected and I just pushed her to it because I really needed to empty um, but like I said I, with some help of some Theraperl Lansano uh, heat packs and some pumping uh, and some antibiotics that went away I immediately got thrush afterwards though that was probably because of my cracked well, a combination. One, I had cracked and bleeding nipples from her because she was such an intense sucker. Um, she was latched on completely fine. She just really was had to work hard to get stuff to come down because my milk didn't come in until four days after we came home from the hospital. So it, she was frustrated. She wanted milk and it just, yeah. So the combination of that and the antibiotics I took for my mastitis killed all of the good bacteria in me. And so that let all the yeast that lives in me and you, everybody, um, take control of my body. So I did immediately get thrush afterwards, which again, like I mentioned, me and her are both battling right now. Um, we have been passing it back and forth. We're both on medication. Again, it takes up to six weeks, though, sometimes to get rid of. Um, she has a pediatrician appointment on Monday, so I'm going to talk to them about that. But um, yeah, so then I immediately got thrush, which was just upsetting. And I, again, I had that with my son too, so I was very familiar. I then also had a UTI during my mastitis, which the, luckily the antibiotics I was taking for my mastitis cleared that up as well. It's been a great month, guys. <laughs> I've been less tired now. I was very tired in the beginning just because of all my infections and I wasn't sleeping and all of that. You know, I have a toddler. It's hard. I can't nap ever. I was sore until about three weeks, just up about a week ago. I Now I'm feeling back to myself. My back still hurts, but again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to physical therapy again like I did during my pregnancy, and hopefully that'll clear that up. My Linnea Negra down my center is still there. I'll show you guys that later. I'm still in my maternity jeans and my yoga pants. Uh, I don't want, I can't bring myself to go spend a bunch of money on jeans that I hope I will outgrow in the next month, so... Right now my uh, maternity skinny jeans from Old Navy still fit me and you can't even really tell that they're maternity jeans and then I just wear my yoga pants as well um, if I go out. But yeah, my boobs are huge. This is something that I really don't like. I'm a flat chested lady. I am not ashamed of that. I used to be, it used to be a huge thing for me. I used to have a complex about it. But I hate that my boobs are so big now. For me, they're big because my shirts, none of them fit, even though like I've lost, you know, the big pregnant belly, none of my shirts fit because my boobs are too big, so they're all too short in the front, and then like my shoulders are a lot broader because my boobs are bigger, and it's just like, I don't know, I just don't feel like myself, and it's just kind of like, I don't know. It took about six months when I was pregnant and nursing with my son for my boobs to kind of go back to like a m more comfortable size for me, so I'm hoping that happens again, but... I mean, who knows? I don't know. So I have bought some new tops, actually, to fit me in my new boob time. And then, yeah, that's it in terms of my uh, weeks after. Other than those things, that's kind of been, like, my month and, uh, you know, wrapped up in 10 minutes. The biggest things for me now, uh, 
I did have my four week appointment, postpartum appointment a few days ago. I talked to my doctor about a few things. One of them would be my PPD. As you guys know, if you follow my blog or my Facebook, I have been struggling very hard. Um, I thought it was baby blues the first week. I thought it was baby blues the second week. Third week hit and I knew it was something more. And I suffer from PPD, which is postpartum depression with both my daughter and my son. I'm actually prone to depression anyways. Uh, I had it all through high school, basically a lot of my life. So with my daughter, I think it was because I was a teenager, obviously. I didn't get along with her father. Um, I was working three jobs sometimes at a time. I didn't have any friends. With my son, um, we had a lot of family issues with my in-laws. Um, me and my husband's marriage, they didn't really approve of it, so to speak. And having a baby was just hard um, dealing with all that because I want people, I want my family to like me. I want them to love me even if they aren't blood. Um, anyways, that's here nor there. But So I suffered from it with him as well. I went on medication with my daughter because she was bottle fed and I didn't like the way that it made me feel. It made me more depressed. Um, so I started tanning to kind of get rid of it with her but then I got addicted to it and had to cut that off because I didn't like what it was doing to my skin obviously and it's expensive but anyways with my son I left got what I was untreated until it finally hit a boiling point and um, I finally sought help for it. I got some counseling done and that helped. Um, I made some life changes in terms of the people that were in my life and the things that I was doing, um, and so that was that. Uh, this time around, it is, it's, it's, I don't even know how to ex describe it. I, I'm just sad. I'm very weepy. I was hoping it was just hormonal, but after talking to my doctor, it's not. Um, he suggested putting me on Zoloft or Prozac, that kind of stuff, but because I am breastfeeding, I don't feel comfortable taking any of that stuff until I talk to my pediatrician first or trying some all natural things like upping my vitamin D and that kind of thing. In terms of describing how I feel and what PBD is like, it's very, I don't know. With my daughter, it was, it was, it was overwhelming. Like I felt like I wanted to kill myself, literally. With my son, I just felt very alone and very just sad all the time. Like I didn't get happiness out of anything. Um, this time around, I still I get happiness out of my kids. I love them. Um, this time, I'm just just sad. I feel um, very alone, even though I have a lot of friends like you guys. Um, I feel very tired, and I feel like giving up a lot a, a lot of the days. Um, everything, even little things, are just more overwhelming, and I think that has to do with because I'm tired, you know. I have a toddler this time around on top of a newborn. It's really hard. Um, I also have a daughter who's in school, so she's got her things that still need to be going on. Um, leaving the house is really difficult with three kids or even two. One who's a bolter. White loves to run, so I really can't go anywhere if he's with me too. Um, all these infections that I've been getting have been really hard to deal with. Um, just there's it's there it's a lot of things. Um, I've just I don't know. My husband comes home. We fight. Um, we love each other. Don't get me wrong. We love each other to death and we will make it through anything, but um, It's just hard uh, It's just hard um, Yeah, so Basically what I've been trying to do is to get more time to myself My husband um, kept the kids and made me go out for two hours on Thursday with my mom and my daughter or Wednesday And I got to go shopping with them, which was great um I was kind of rejuvenating, but then the next day, of course, I felt sad again. But then I couldn't feel sad too long because Friday, yesterday, I went out with my mom. She paid for a babysitter for Wyatt for the whole day. Ava was at school, and me and her and Kaya, which is e she's easy to take out in public, um, we just spent the whole day shopping in Columbus, which was amazing. Um, but it's still hard. I still wake up, and I just the first feeling I have is just sadness. Um, just kind of a, okay, here's another day. How am I going to make it through, kind of. Uh, and that, that would be where this depression has kind of led me. Um, I still love my kids, and I get very happy seeing them. I don't, you know, wish anything different, but I just, you know, it's an imbalance, you know, in here. And so it's just something that I'm going to have to find a way to fix. Um, but yeah, anyways, um... Yeah, um, but I can recognize when I need help, you know, and I'm recognizing that I need it. And and I think that's what's most important is that you don't need to be embarrassed about it and you it's not something that's wrong with you, you know. 
and if you don't get help for it or you don't seek help it just explodes I didn't seek help for a long time with Wyatt and it really did a number on my marriage with my husband and this time around I wasn't gonna mess around so I know that I need help and I will find that help but until I find a healthy way of doing it in a safe way um, while I'm nursing um, I'm just gonna have to cope so anyways um, <laughs> But yeah, so there's that. Also, another thing that's kind of made me emotional this week is at my appointment, um, I scheduled a surgery. It will be December 7th. It's called an ablation. It's a Novasher procedure is what I opted for. What they will do, I have really heavy periods. I always have. Um, they've been like, it's hard. You're losing a lot of blood. My iron, I'm already a little bit anemic. Um, they're just... They were making my life miserable. Because I've had three kids already, and I'm pretty sure that I we'd already talked about me not having any more because it's just financially we can't afford to, um, that kind of thing. Uh, we ah. I'm a good candidate for it. So I scheduled my surgery, and I know I've told you guys that like I don't want to have any more kids. Me and my husband have decided this is the last one. Um, but you can say stuff, but then making like the steps to actually like follow through on things is completely different. So I've had a really hard time in the past few days kind of struggling with this decision. Um, but what I did was I signed my consent form and scheduled a surgery date. Um, it's just, it's an easy procedure. They go in and they basically laser the inside of my uterus, I think, going in through my cervix. So if you've ever had DNC, I had a DNC after Wyatt, when, or before Wyatt when I had a miscarriage. Um, but it's kind of the same thing. They go in through your cervix, but then they just do a different procedure. Um, I'll be out for a whole day for, because they're going to put me under, and then I should pop back, and my periods will be a lot lighter, um, which is awesome. Um, and they may even dissipate, so that's great. But, um, by getting it done, it will mean that I will never be able to carry a child again. Um, I will be able to get pregnant again, um, but my uterus will not be able to sustain a pregnancy. So, basically it means I won't ever have, I won't ever be able to have another child. Um, and like I said, you know, me and my husband already talked about that. We'd made that decision. Um, saying you're gonna do something and then actually finally taking the steps to do that is like, it makes it more real. Um, so, of course, after my appointment, I immediately talked to my husband about it. And even he was sad and kind of like, well, should we do this, you know, and kind of was having second thoughts. And I, I don't know. I know that my family cannot afford to have another child. It's irresponsible for us to even consider having another child at this point. And we want to be able to afford to take our kids to, like, Disneyland and all the fun stuff and not feel like, you know, we're spread too thin. But to just say that you're not going to have any more kids, you know, just to make that definite is just really hard, you know, because we just, you know, I don't know. And then people are always saying, you know, you make such beautiful babies. How can you be done? That kind of stuff. And it's like, well, you're going to pay for my beautiful babies to go to college, you know, um, are you going to stay up with them all night long when they're sick? Are you going to do this? You know, like we would be responsible for that. So yeah, great. We make pretty babies, but it's just like you have to take responsibility and think of the things that come after their babies. And that's what we've done, and that's why we've decided that, you know, Kaya's our last. But again, it's just so hard because, like, I'm 26, and it's just like, I'm done having kids. Like, this means I'm done. Like, um, John gained a bisectomy meant he was done, but I could still, you know, bear children. But now, after I get this procedure done, it means that I won't be able to bear any more children. Um... So yeah, that was a very emotional thing that me and him talked about, and it's, I, I don't know, I'm very, I'm, we're definite we're not having more kids, but it's still hard to say that you're done, so, yeah. So yeah, I will be getting my ablation done on December 7th, um, I will bring you guys along, if you have any questions about it, let me know, I would be more than happy to answer those for you. And yeah, uh, John is scheduling his visectomy, like I said, he's taking a month off in disability, which is just really stressful as well. Uh, right over the holiday season, so I don't know. We'll find a way. But he is taking disability uh, for a month uh, for his knee surgery, so he'll be getting his bisectomy done during that time. Because like I said, I will still be able to get pregnant, 
but I won't be able to sustain a pregnancy. So I really don't want to get pregnant and have much miscarriages. So he is getting a vasectomy done and I will be getting my ablation done. So no more babies for us. Um, uh, anyways, promised I wasn't going to cry, so I'm not going to cry. But anyways, so that is that. Um, that's my month and I will tell you guys how next month goes as well. I will be only making updates every month from now on because every week is just too much. Um, but I will keep making videos. I have a video that I recorded, um, that I'm going to record after this on things I couldn't live without for this month that I'll post tomorrow and a blog post as well. And of course I'll, I have a question and answers video that I've been collecting questions from everybody for. So if you have any questions, I will record that this week. So let me know. Um, and then I'll, you know, of course I'll do daily vlogs every once in a while and I'll continue to do product reviews and keep you guys all updated and of course on my Facebook too, so, and my blog. So yeah, um, anyways, I want to say a quick thank you if I can before my battery dies. I got a bunch of great gifts from my friend Vicky um, in Canada. She's just awesome. These cute little socks, how adorable are they? And this cute outfit. Um, I love them. Thank you so much. Um, and then I got this adorable knit hat, oh my gosh, from Francis, who also did the booties that everybody's been asking about on my Facebook. So it's just adorable. I'll show you guys a picture on my Facebook with it on. It's so cute. It's so soft. And then also Anne, um, she sent me some Korean snacks, which I have not gotten to eat all of them because I gave up sugar. But um, I will dig into these as soon as I can. And a cute outfit for Kaya that I can't wait for her to fit into in a few months. So thank you everybody for everything that you've sent. Thank you for everybody for your support. Um, my thank you card is going out right now as we speak. The postman just walked past my door. I love you guys all. Thank you again. Um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to email. I love my pen pal relationship that I've built with a lot of you. And yeah, so my battery's about to die. I'm going to go and I will talk to you guys all later. So, bye. Oh, you probably all want to see my belly. So, if I can before my battery dies. Um, here it is from one side. Here it is from the front. And here it is from the other side. Sorry, I'm breastfeeding her. Um, but bye.